As you see, that's a description of Family Tree. It's a very simple piece of software that generates the Family Tree layout from very simple data. So if I get rid of this particular screen, that's the application running there. And if you say a very simple directory structure here, Smith & Jones, but inside which you've got Smith and Jones, and each of those has families with offspring in a subdirectory. If you just drag that directory onto the icon, you'll see that it has created the data in the form of the family tree. Now, you've got three generations here three generations there, and an apparently empty box there. The box is deliberately empty because it allows you to edit this. Until they line up, and you can see there that Alan's brother John married Alan's sister Mary, and the two family trees have been joined up. And one of the things you can do with that is drag it into impression where it's treated as a draw file. And if I now want to edit it, if I now control double click, it will open it in family tree for editing so that I can now put in a few edits and then simply save it back to the impression document and you'll see the edits have appeared and if I now close that back up again and save it again you'll see that the draw graphic in the impression has been corrected. So this allows you to produce a large family tree just by starting off with a directory structure with the different families and offspring. However, you may already have done your research and have a GetCom file to load, because nearly all the genealogy software will output files in GetCom format. So if I drag a Bronte GED file into the application, you'll see we have here a family tree of the Brontes. By closing it up, you can make better use of the space so that you don't use too much paper. And you see, as you edit one box, the others all follow it. So that you don't have to rearrange every single box. Just by clicking the mouse, you're just closing up the gaps. And you can then save that as a draw graphic. And if I load that into draw, it's A1 landscape width. So it's quite a sensible size to print. Inevitably, you're going to have to print it on a printer that allows roll feed. Or any print bureau will, for very small amounts of money, will print paper of that size very cheaply, so a pound or two. You'll probably pay more for the postage to get it back than your paper have it printed. So that was the idea. So it was initially developed purely to take a directory structure and to turn it into a family tree. And the comments that came back to me was that it ought to be able to import GEDCOM files so it can import GEDCOM files. Inside them are a load of statements like that, but that's all really to register all the different individuals and whose family they come from, when they were born, and all the other bits and pieces allowing you to be vague about certain things because it's designed to help you do research. So if you think they were born in 1810 to 1820, you can just give date ranges and things as you get better and better data. So interpreting it in, in the form of a, a family tree, I can only bring in the data that's in there. So if there are dates, they just appear in the freeform text that they are in, looking at that one as an example, you can see born day, month, 
year, uh, married, they, and the month's written out in full with the year, because that's how it was recorded in the GEMCOM file. You can edit the data easily by um, simply taking one of the internal format files that are produced like, like a disk cap file and editing it in a text editor to put the stuff in the boxes which is that bit there. You can just edit that to be whatever you want. So it's actually extremely easy to edit the thing manually to get exactly what you want in the boxes. Do you can't um, actually edit within the program? No, I haven't put that in yet because, well, it would be possible <laughs> to click menu there yeah. and have a different menu in the context of a box uh -huh. that would allow you to edit it. But it's actually easier to edit it in this file than it is to edit bits of it one at a time on the screen. So it's actually easier to edit that file, putting in everything you want, saving it, dragging it back into the application again. You've got four different save formats. You've got save the draw file, save as the hybrid draw file and uh, the internal format, save as the internal format, or save it as a zip file with all those directories in that you would have started from if you did it using the directory method. So it's quite flexible. I presume you could use something like Steve Fryer's media to save it as a PDF. Well, what you can do, if you save it as a draw file, you can print direct to the PS3 printer drivers oh, yeah. Yeah. from Draw. Although draw only shows you up to a naught size, it actually holds data for bigger paper sizes. So as long as you've got the printer driver set with the correct paper size, you can print to it and it will produce a PDF via Steve Fryatt's uh, print PDF. Or, and then you can send that PDF to a print bureau. And you can send the PDF to a print bureau and they print it on roll paper. And, and very inexpensively yeah. too. The other thing I have to show you is this is a satellite navigation system without a sat nav board <laughs> so it, it goes for a little amble around the countryside as you can see it's doing there which it's now recording so it's just walking around in what professes to be something approximating a circle and it works out whereabouts it would be on the railway line that goes up on the side so that when it gets close enough, it will reflect its position and working out the milepost mileage if it was travelling along the railway. So that if the signal drifts, it resolves its position along the known piece of railway line. Because the original reason for developing this bit of kit here is to be able to work out where it was along the line and to display the speed and milepost mileage. So that is a that is just effectively a test of the software doing that, but if there's no GPS module attached, the SatNav software simply ambles around to show you that it, it can work if you actually connect it up. Uh, but the two applications are communicating with each other with messages so that as the SatNav says, I know where I am, I'm at that point of reference, it's sending a message to Risk OSM <coughs> to say, please draw a map at this location with these things on it. So in principle, you can have yourself and other points plotted on a map. So you could, for example, show your boat and boats you know of near to you um, on, on a map, or whatever data you want to go and fetch. Any questions? The Orphan Street data, is it vector-based? It, it is vector-based, so if you go into Risk OSM, you can export the map as a draw file, and all of those lines will appear in the draw file as vector graphics. If you go into the style features, you can change the style of the map. You've got monochrome, and you can make your own style file, so that if you wanted rivers to appear purple and railways to appear green and uh, everything else to be pink or something, you can, you can do that. And you can also look for photographs at the location you're at. <laughs> Find web photos. So that's now finding <laughs> photographs 
in the area of Udley. So you can see there's quite a few of Norfolk Hall there. So let's just grab them off the internet and say here's some photos that we know were taken in those locations. If you, there is a feature, you can turn off individually any particular feature. So if I turn off Woodland, That's the advantage of the bit graphics because you can you can just turn turn the uh, features off uh, selectively. So turning off all the highways, for example, I only got left with a lot really. <laughs> so it's very flexible. You, you can also rotate the map. So if, if you fancy north at 90 degrees, there it is. So north is now that way, but the text is all still readable, so that the, the town names are still horizontal. So that's rather cunning. So you can, if you were doing a GPS following, you could rotate the map so that straight ahead is the direction you're walking. The map data is it loaded from an official OpenStreetMap? No, it is OpenStreetMap yeah. data, but they have okay. um, um, packaged it with Risk OSM, the, the map, mapping software. But you can generate your own tiles, I believe, so you're not constrained to do what yeah. they've provided. But they've now got contour data, and you can overlay grid lines. So there's, there's grid lines overlaid on the map. Any more questions? Thank you very much.